على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على عدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين عما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala there is no doubt that it's due to his kindness and generosity that he provides for us opportunities such as these where we gather in remembrance and in reflection of him Tabaraka wa Ta'ala next we send our salutations and congratulatory messages to our 12th and living imam Imam Al Hujjah ajal Allah Ta'ala farajahu sharif Ah, salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad And to each and every one of you as we gather this evening to celebrate the wiladat, the birth anniversary of Amirul Mu'mineen, Imamul Muttaqeen, Ghalibun ala kulli Ghalib, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhim afdalu salatu wa salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are fortunate to go for the ziyarat of our Imam in Najaf insha'Allah and that we receive his shafa'at in the hereafter as well insha'Allah. It is a happy occasion. Yeah, I don't want to see any frowns, no yawning, yeah, nothing. I'm limited with time so there can't be yawning. Yeah? Um, but we want to have a good time, we want to understand, we want to get closer to Ali alayhi salam insha'Allah And through the process of this lecture we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us that ma'rifah and that ability insha'Allah What can we say about Haydar? Yeah? There are not enough words in the language that can describe Ali alayhi salam So whatever we do tonight, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our efforts insha'Allah and that we can do even an iota of justice to the ihsan and the, the greatness that he has left us behind and the legacy that we continue to love and to follow insha'Allah. There is a tradition that we get from Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Annahu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Ma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. You know we're going to have to do better than that as the night goes on, inshallah. Yeah? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Annahu qal, lamma khalaqa Allahu ta'ala Adam wa nafakha fihi min ruhihi atas. He says that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, says that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew his, blew his spirit, into the soul of Adam or into the body of Adam, Adam alayhi salam sneezed, atas. فقال الحمد لله And he said, the first thing after he sneezed, he said, Alhamdulillah. This is why when we sneeze, we say, Alhamdulillah. فَأَوْحَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَمِدَنِي عَبْدِي He says to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, My servant, now that you have praised me, now that you have thanked me, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لَوْ لَا عَبْدَانْ أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَخْلَكُهُمَا فِي دَارِ الدُّنْيَا لَمَا خَلَقْتُكَ يَا آدَمْ He says, O oh Adam, were it not for two servants, yeah? were it not for two servants, O oh Adam, who I want to create in the future, I would not even have created you, O oh Adam. Yeah. So Adam alayhi salam looks at him and says, Ya Abdi, Ya Allah, Afayakunani minni? Will they be from my progeny? To which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Naam ya Adam. He says, Yes, O Adam, they will be from your progeny. Irfa ra'asak. Lift your head, Adam. Wanzur farafa'a ra'asahu fa'idha maktubun al arsh. He says, Adam raised his head 
and looked and it was written on the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la ilaha illallah muhammadun nabiyyir rahma wa aliyun muqimul hujja yeah allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad it, ya ali yeah he says that it was written on the arsh of Allah, on the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Nabiyur Rahma sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and Allah ma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, and Aliyun muqimul hujja, and Ali is the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali is the hujja of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in this hadith al-Qudsi telling Adam alayhi salam Man arafa haqqa ali zaka wa taba One who recognizes the rights of Ali One who recognizes the maqam of Ali alayhi salam will purify himself وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ حَقَّهُ لُعِنَا وَخَابُ And one who denies the maqam of Ali will be condemned and will perish. أَقْسَمْتُ بِعِزَّتِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He says, I swear by my might. Yeah? I swear by my glory. أَنْ أُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ مَنْ أَطَاعَهُ وَإِنْ عَسَانِي وَأَقْسَمْتُ بِعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي أَنْ أُدْخِلَ النَّارَ مَنْ عَسَاهُ وَإِنْ أَطَاعَنِي Subhanallah. He says, I swear by my might, O Adam, one who is obedient to Ali, even though they may have sinned against me, I will allow them to enter Jannah. And one who denies the maqam of Ali, one who oppresses Ali, one who denies Ali, even though they may have been obedient to me, they will not enter Jannah. Yeah. There are many things to learn from this. Yeah. One of the most important things is, no matter what we do in our lives, if, it, if that action is not coupled with the wilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib, that action has no merit. Yeah. That action has no foundation. But we need that obedience to Ali. We need that, that recognition of the maqam of Ali alayhi salam. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ma salli ala Muhammad ali Muhammad. He says, wa huwa al-imamu wa khalifatu min ba'di fa man tamassaka bihi faza wa naja wa man takhallafa anhu dhalla wa ghawa. Because Ali is my imam after me. Ali is the next khalifa after me. Whoever recognizes Ali will be successful. Whoever denies Ali will perish. Yeah. These are the merits of Ali. This is the maqam of Ali. But you know, we need to take a step back from here. Yeah? We, the Shias of Ali, recognize this. We recognize the maqam of Ali and recognize that our entry into Jannah is dependent on our link with Ali ibn Abi Talib. There is no doubt, there is no doubt in anyone's mind. The hadith literature is absolutely clear about this. But we need to take a step back. Yeah, we need to learn something, right? And what we're trying to say tonight is that there are people yeah, who take traditions such as these, which talk about the love of Ali, and which talk about the necessity of the love of Ali to enter into Jannah, right? So many traditions, so many traditions. Unwan Sahifatul Mu'min Hubbu Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, says the title of the book of deeds of the believers is the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? That means one who wants to enter Jannah must have that title of love of Ali ibn Abi Talib on their book. So people have taken these traditions yeah? and they claim the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib even though their actions may be contrary to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah, they say, I love Ali. And because of my love of Ali, it doesn't matter what else I do in life, I will be allowed into Jannah. Yeah? Because of my matam, I will be allowed into Jannah. Because of my attachment to the Ahlul Bayt, السلام, it is not necessary to worry about anything else. 
I will be allowed into Jannah. And we're talking about our madhab in particular, right? Because the other madhabs have to worry about other things, like the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? They start a little bit behind us on that. Yeah? We, alhamdulillah, have the love of Ali. This is why we are gathered in gatherings such as this. Yeah? But we sometimes forget that there is an added responsibility with the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib yeah? You look at examples and we have given examples in the past and there are more examples. I remember our time in Sham that whenever Arba'een would come about, whenever um, the wafat of Sayyidah Zainab salam would come about, whenever Muharram would come about, people from all over the world would come to Sham. This was before Iraq was open the way it is now. Yeah? They would come to Sham and you would find many of these people who would come from different parts of the world they had immense love for Ali ibn Abi Talib yeah? immense love, you can see the love that they carried for Ali ibn Abi Talib yet they had no care for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted yeah? the time for namaz would come the time for salah would come and their matam would still be continuing outside yeah? You would ask them, Baba, it's time for Salah. They say, no, the Matam comes first for Imam al Hussein. Yeah? Their understanding of the love for Ali was warped. Was warped. Yeah? They felt that simply having this love for Ali was enough if they disregard everything else. You would see them, for example, go into the bathroom without shoes because they don't wear shoes. Yeah? These are the Malangis I'm talking about. Yeah? They would come. They would go to the bathroom without shoes and then they would walk into the maqam of Sayyidah Not caring, taharat, najasat is not important. Why? Because I love Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? That's what they had. That's the understanding that they had. We see today people yeah, here in Canada, here, there in America, in, in the Western world. Yeah? People say, well, I love Ali. But I will take advantage of every loophole that is found in the government. Why? Because it is a kafir country. Yeah? So they take every advantage that they can. Not recognizing that this would not make Ali proud. Yeah? This would not make Ali alayhi salam happy that they are acting in this way. But all they cared about was that I have the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I have the loudest nare haydaris. Yeah? It doesn't matter about anything else. We've given so many other examples. Last time in the wiladat of our fifth Imam, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. <laughs> Ma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We gave a couple of examples that I want to restate today just because the crowd is different. Yeah? You have, for example, in Iraq, what is happening now for the sake of Sha'ir al Hussein, for the sake of their love and attachment to Hussein, salam, there are those who act like dogs of Hussein. They call themselves Kilab al Hussein. Yeah? What does Kilab mean? Dogs of Hussein. But what do they do? Yeah? They walk around with chains around their necks and they have people pulling them and they're barking. Yeah? But they say they love Ali ibn Abi Talib. But that's their demonstration of love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. In India, yeah, you have people on the wedding anniversary of Imam Ali and Bibi Fatima alayhima afdalu salatu was salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Yeah? Who do what? We describe this, but it's important. Yeah? Who say what? That this is the wedding anniversary. So because it's a wedding anniversary, they take an alam out from one side of the city and they do a raqs, a dance and music throughout this whole path. What are they doing? They're taking the groom to the bride's house. Yeah? And then, then they take this one alam and they take it inside the house where there is another alam. And that alam is who? Yeah, you with me? That alam is who? Fatima alayhi salam, yeah? And then they put them inside the room and they close the door. And they think they are honoring the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam this way. Yeah? Imagine, not only that, they criticize the people yeah, who don't celebrate with them on the street saying, you don't have love for Ali if you don't celebrate in this way. Yeah? This is the warped ideology that many of our Shia have fallen into. Why? Because they only understood the, the outer, the zahir of these type of hadith. When they say the love of Ali is all we need, they say, well, the love of Ali is all we need. Nothing else matters then. Yeah? A companion by the name of Muhammad bin Mazid, he asks our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Salli ala 
Muhammad wali Muhammad He says to him ruwiya lana annaka qulta idha arafta fa'mal ma'shid yeah he says it has come to us in narrations that you have said that whoever recognizes us yeah whoever recognizes the ahlul bayt alayhi musalam they can do what they please yeah he's asking the imam yeah he says that we have heard these traditions where you have said that if you love us if you recognize us man arafta whoever recognizes us they can do what they please the imam alayhi salam says naam qultu zalik yeah i said that yeah we have said that we the ahlul bayt alayhi salam have said that so the man was surprised yeah he says ya ibn rasulillah wa in zana wa aw saraqu aw sharibu al khamr yeah he says what if they are promiscuous yeah what if they steal what if they drink alcohol the imam alayhi salam replies back and he says inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun he says we come from allah and to allah we will return he says i swear by god they are wronging us yeah they are wronging us they are doing zulm upon us the imam alayhi salam says we the imams ourselves yeah we the imams ourselves are responsible for our actions how can the actions of the shia be lifted from them you paying attention yeah did you hear what the imam said yeah he said we in the eyes of god are responsible yani when we do something we will be judged by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can our shia be lifted from being judged by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yeah? that what right do our shia have to think that they will not be taken to task by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just because they've recognized us their recognition has no value yeah if it is not coupled with what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the imam alayhi salam says inna ma qultu is what we intended by our speech is idha arafta once you have recognized us fa'mal ma shi'ta min qalil al khair wa kathir fa innahu yuqbalu minka yeah he says what we have intended to say is that after you have recognized us do whatever you want of khair or do whatever you want of goodness whether it is small or a lot it will be accepted from you by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah again what's the inverse of that yeah the inverse of that is that if you do abundance of khair but you have not recognized them it has no value in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but on the other hand yeah the recognition of the positions of the imam necessitates that there must be action which is congruent with the belief that we have of the imams alayhi musallam yeah are you all with me yeah it's not complex i know we've had a long day of work but i need you to be with me and the way you show that you're with me is how Allah. yeah allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad i was going for nod your head yeah but we will accept the salawat salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahum salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad yeah so how are we to understand then right So if this is what the Imam alayhi salam says that look we're not just saying go do what you want dilly dally around and then because you have our love you'll be taken to jannah so that's not what we're saying yeah but then on the other hand we have traditions which are so straight forward yeah that it is only the love of Ali right that will allow you paradise It is only the obedience to Ali which will allow you Jannah. The hadith is so clear as well that we mentioned in the very beginning that man ata'a Ali wa in asani udkhiluhu fil Jannah. Yeah? That Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says that one who is obedient to Ali and even though they may sin against me sometimes I will still allow them into Jannah. How can we reconcile these? right how do we understand these together so that we can leave here with an understanding of what is expected us of us as the shia of ali ibn abi talib alayhi salam yeah we find such traditions which are remarkable which if we keep quoting them and quoting them all it will bring about is more wahwas and more nare haideries yeah and sometimes our khatib and our ulama just give us that yeah and we get riled up we get excited 
And then it leaves us with that idea that we can go around doing whatever we want because I have that love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? We come to another tradition like this where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad He says Hubbu Ali ibn Abi Talib hasana If we can ask people to please move forward Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Ahsantum Saniyan ghafar Allahu lakum Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad and the last one to increase our love for Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, says, Hubbu Ali bin Abi Talib hasana, la tadurru ma'aha sayyia. He says that the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib is a good deed. The love of Ali ibn Abi Talib is a good deed with which no evil deed can bring that person harm yeah? with which no evil deed can bring that person any harm yeah? now if I had not already described that we would be amazed with this hadith yeah? we would be saying wah wah for this hadith but having understood what we have understood so far how do we then reconcile this Shaheed Mutahhari may Allah inshallah elevate his status inshallah he explains this hadith very beautifully yeah? he says the meaning of the tradition this tradition that I just quoted the meaning of this tradition is if one's love for Ali ibn Abi Talib is sincere and not out of self-centeredness. Yeah? Yani, it is sincere love that I'm having for Ali. Not for any other reason. It will prevent the committing of sins. Yeah? The love of Ali will prevent me from committing any sins. Just as a vaccine that brings immunity and keeps sickness away from the vaccinated person. Yeah? Ahsant. That the love of Ali serves as an immunization. Yeah? This is why Shafi'i, yeah? the Imam of Shafi'i, what does he say? Aliyun hubbuhu junnah. Yeah? Shafi'i, you know in the end they said Shafi'i went mad. Yeah? Why did they say that he went mad? Because he had immense love for Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? This is Imam Shafi'i. He says in a very beautiful couplet, yeah? he says Aliyun hubbuhu junnah, yeah? qasimun nari wal jannah. وَسِيُّ الْمُصْطَفَى حَقًّا إِمَامُ الْإِنْسِ وَأَحْسَنْتُمْ وَالْجِنَّةِ yeah? He says that the love of Ali is a protection. Yeah? Why is it a protection? Because one who loves Ali will be saved. Why will they be saved? Because he is قَسِيمُ nari wal jannah. Because Ali decides who will go into Jannah or the Nar of Jahannam. He is وَسِيُّ الْمُصْطَفَى حَقًّا He is the rightful successor of the Prophet. Yeah? And the imam of the man and jinn, all of them, right? So when we look at this, the, 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 what Shaheed Mutahari, Haf Rahimahullah, he says that this love for Ali serves as a immunization for a person. He says it is impossible for one who recognizes Ali ibn Abi Talib and one who loves such a person to act in opposition of his command. Yeah? Pay attention to what he is saying. Yeah? It is impossible for a person who says that they love Ali alayhi salam to act in opposition with his command. For obedience to the beloved is a necessary result of true love. Yeah? Obedience to the beloved is a necessary result of true love. Yeah? That means if we say that we love Ali, we follow Ali in every single matter of life. Yeah? We follow the akhlaq of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? We follow the intentions of Ali ibn Abi Talib. We follow the actions of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Wherever Ali goes, we do. Wherever Ali avoids, we avoid. You know, it is said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. ala. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. He says once he brought, 
He brought Salman al-Muhammadi and he brings Abu Dhar al-Ghafari. Yeah? And he sits them down. And he attends, he draws his attention or looks towards Abu Dhar. He says, Ya Abu Dhar, yeah? what if I was to tell you? Yeah? Let's just suppose, he says, yeah, that Na'udhu Billah, I tell you that Ali drank alcohol. Yeah? What would you say? Yeah? Abu Dhar says, Ya Rasulullah, it's impossible. Ali would never drink alcohol. The Prophet said, not in his head. He said, yes, he would never drink alcohol. But let's just suppose yeah, that Ali drank alcohol. What would you say, Ya Abadar? He says, I would say to him, O oh, Ali, do not drink alcohol. It is haram. Yeah? The Prophet says, Barakallahu feek, Ya Abadar. Yeah? May Allah increase your barakah. That is absolutely correct. Yeah? Then he brings Salman. He says, Salman, what if I were to tell you, let's suppose... Yeah? What if I were to tell you that Ali drank alcohol? What would you say? Salman says, Ya Rasulullah, I would say that alcohol then is halal. He says, why would you say that? Because Aliun ma'al haq wal haqqu ma'ali. Yeah? That whatever Ali does is haq. Yeah? And wherever haq is, Ali will be there. If we claim to be the Shias of Ali... If we claim to be the lovers of Ali ibn Abi Talib, it is an impossibility that our actions are contrary to the teachings of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? You understand? Allah ma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I remember one of my teachers giving a, a parable, an example. He says, imagine you go to a mall and you know in the mall they have people who spray perfume on you. Isn't it? Yeah, they spray you. You walk by, they spray you. Yeah? He says, imagine you walk by a perfume counter and the person who's holding the sprayer has the worst body odor you've ever smelt in your life. Yeah? What would you say to that person? Baba, use some of that perfume. Yeah, wouldn't you? He says, we who claim to love Ali ibn Abi Talib, yet our actions are contrary to that. Ali is telling us that if you love me, follow me then. Yeah? Your actions should be like me. Yeah? And this is where we understand, my brothers and sisters, that if we want to be amongst those people whose love for Ali serves as our salvation, as it has been promised, it has been promised, if you love Ali, you will be guaranteed Jannah. Yeah? But what type of love is this? This is love with obedience to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? This is mawadda. Yeah? This is mawadda. Mawadda is not love. Mawadda is love that is coupled with obedience. So when Rasulullah through the Holy Quran he says, Qul la as'alukum alayhi ajra illal mawadda al qurba. That I'm not asking for any reward from you except for mawadda for my family. What is that mawadda? That you love them. Sure, loving is not difficult. Yeah? We love many things. But the love has to be congruent with the obedience of Ali ibn Abi Talib. So we have to love what Ali loves. Yeah? We have to dislike what Ali dislikes. Yeah? Without a second thought. You know what Ali likes? Ali likes justice. Yeah? You know what Ali does not like? Ali does not like oppression and tyranny. Yeah? Ali does not like injustice. It is said that once during the reign of the second Khalifa, there was a person who brought a charge against Ali in the court of the second Khalifa. He had a complaint, so he went to the court. Yeah? He filed a lawsuit against Ali, basically. Yeah? So when they went to the court of the second Khalifa, the second Khalifa walked into the court and he sat on his throne, or his Hakim Shari seat. Yeah? And then he calls the person who was the plaintiff, and he says, Fulan, come here and stand here. Yeah? And then he says, O oh, Abul Hassan, come and stand here. Immediately, Imam alayhi salam looked agitated. Yeah? He looked upset. Yeah? He looked angered. The second Khalifa asks him, Oh Ali, are you not happy that I'm making you stand next to the person who is your accuser? So Ali says, no. He says, you have done injustice to the court. Yeah? He says, how have I done injustice to the court? He said, you address this person by his name and you address me as Abu Hassan. Yeah? You have automatically shown me more respect than you have And you have already brought injustice to this court yeah? It is said the second Khalifa came off his seat He came and he hugged Ali and kissed him on his forehead 
And he says, May my father be ransomed to you, O Ali. Allah has guided us with your mediation and brought us out of darkness and into light. Yeah? This is the justice of Ali. You know what that translates to us in our day-to-day -day lives? Is that if we love Ali, we want for others to be treated the way we want to be treated. Yeah? Think about that statement. Yeah? It's not that we treat others the way we would like to be treated. That's something else. Yeah? I treat you the way I want to be treated. Not just that, but even if I'm not in the equation, I want you to be treated the way I would be treated. I want the respect for you that the respect for me has. There should be no distinction between us. If we, my brothers and sisters, want justice in this world, we pray for people who are suffering from injustices in different parts of the world. If we want a healthier life, then we pray that every single human being in this world has a healthier life. Because that's the, te that's the methodology of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Yeah? This is our responsibility. Yeah? This is how we need to bring about. We need to love the generosity of Ali alayhi salam and be as generous as Ali or try to be. We need to love the sincerity of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and try to be sincere in our actions. You know it is said one day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ma salli ala gave Ali alayhi salam 300 dinar. Yeah? As a gift. He gave Ali alayhi salam 300 dinar and Ali alayhi salam says himself in this tradition that I took that money and I said to myself by Allah, I will give such a charity with these dinar that Allah will accept it. Yeah? And I want to do something. I want to do something in such a selfless manner with the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this. He says on the first night I recited my night prayers. And then as I was walking home, I saw a lady and I gave this lady a hundred dinar. Yeah? So one third of it. He says, I woke up in the morning and the entire city of Medina was saying that Ali gave a hundred dinar to a corrupt woman. Yeah? He says, I was devastated. Yeah? He says, I was devastated. How could I have made that mistake? Yeah? He says, on the second night, I said, again, I'm going to give a charity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from me. He says, I prayed my night prayer and I was walking through the streets and I saw a man and I gave him a hundred dinar. He says, the next day, the people of Medina were saying that Ali gave a hundred dinar to a thief. Yeah. He says, I was devastated. He says, how could I have made this mistake again? So he says, the third night, I said, tonight I'm going to give charity in a way that Allah will surely accept. Yeah. He says, I recited my night prayer and I found a man and I gave him a hundred dinar. He says, the next day, the city of Medina was saying, look at Ali, he gave a hundred dinar to a rich man. Yeah. He says, I didn't know. I don't know what happened. Yeah. He says, how could I have made this mistake three times? He's like, I went distressed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says, and I explained to the Prophet, I said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what has happened. Yeah. The Prophet replies back and says, Oh Ali, Jibreel has just come down. Jibreel has just come down and he says to you, Allah has accepted your charity and has purified your acts. Yeah. That not only has he accepted your charity, he has purified your acts. He says the corrupt woman that you gave a hundred dinar to, she repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use that money to start her own business and, you, and wants to use the rest to get married with it and live a halal life. Yeah? He says, Oh Ali, that thief that you gave that hundred dinar to, he repented and with that money he is going to run a business for himself. Yeah? And he said, Oh Ali, that third man that you gave a hundred dinar to, yeah? that man when he went home he thought to himself, that I am a rich man, but I have never paid zakat once in my life. And look at Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah? Ali doesn't even have anything and he is giving a hundred dinar in this way. He says, by God, he says, immediately he took out a lump sum of his money and kept it aside to give charity, to give zakat. He said, Ali, whatever you did, 
Yeah. It was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a pure way because of your sincere generosity and your niyyah. It is at this time Ibn Abbas narrates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re- revealed the following verse. لِيَجْزِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنَ مَا عَمِلُوا he says, so that Allah may reward them by the best of what they have done. وَيَزِيدَهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ And enhance them out of His grace. وَاللَّهُ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ hisab. Indeed, Allah can reward somebody and provide for somebody without limitations. Yeah? This was Ali alayhi salam. My brothers and sisters, yeah, if we at the end of the day... Yeah, are confident about the traditions that have come and we should be confident. There is a criteria involved. And the criteria involved is is that our actions must be the type of actions that Ali alayhi salam would have done in the course of his life. And if it is, and if it is, then there should be no doubt in our minds that inshallah Jannah is ours inshallah. But there is a criteria and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can live by this criteria and the actions of Ali so that we would be counted amongst those who have become obedient to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Wa akhiru da'wan an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the return of our living imam We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the sins of our parents and our loved ones. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who are going through difficulty that He end their difficulty. For those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers, Ya Allah, please accept their hajat. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta sami'ul alim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Rahimallahu man kara suratil mubarakatil fatiha tasbikuha salati ala muhammad wa ali muhammad. Oh.